Hello everyone. I welcome you all for discussion on another interesting project. This study focuses on agricultural post-harvest losses due to inefficiency in the supply chain processes. Let's discuss it in detail through coming slides. The qualitative and quantitative food losses across supply chain, when measured together, are referred as post-harvest losses. It usually occurs after the crops are harvested until the time they are consumed. Broadly, three agendas have been discussed in this study. Firstly, various aspects of the supply chain involved in the post-harvest have been gone through. Secondly, identified problems have been suitably presented. Lastly, efforts have been made to provide simple and effective solutions feasible at ground level. As we all know, wheat, rice and vegetables, for example, potatoes, are commonly cultivated crops in Punjab. This is usually done according to sowing and harvesting season of respective crops. For instance, wheat is usually sown during the month of October to November and harvested during April to May. Similarly, the timeline for rice and vegetables for example potatoes has been presented for a glance. To begin with, we will focus on our first agenda, that is an overview of post-harvest aspects. Efforts have been made to analyze the problems in supply chain, within the scope of storage facilities, logistics network and improper information flow. Regarding storage facilities, there is no government-owned cold storage. Meanwhile, the available facility lacks proper maintenance and management. However, the private storage facility is not affordable and personal storage facility is very small and inefficient. Regarding logistics network, there is currently no end-to-end -end service provided by the government. Small farmers usually depend on big farmers or commercial players for their needs. Meanwhile, big farmers use their own means for transportation of crops to storage or mandis. Regarding information systems, there is no proper channel between different stakeholders like farmers, middlemen, end buyers and government officials. For example, in case of crops like paddy or wheat, the prices and demands are set by government usually after one month of harvesting by the farmer. Within that one month, the middlemen picks approximately 70% of the crops from farmers at lesser price while remaining 30 percent is sold at government regulated price due to which farmers suffer huge losses this slide tends to explain the current running mechanism of mandis it is clearly visible that middlemen controls the overall execution of process moreover farmers possess very less bargaining power due to lack of information hence Ensuring transparency in process with flow of complete information will play a key role in addressing the situation. The table gives an overview of comparison between market and mandi prices for different crops. Although, the tentative price information is based on the inputs of local farmers from Amritsar region. The fact that mandi being a free market, largely influences the supply and demand prices, and thus leads to huge gaps. In an attempt to improve farmers' situation, Agriculture Department is putting their efforts to engage them in side business related to honeybee, textile etc. Although, ground reality is very different when it comes to mandi price regulation. As informed by them, the majority of government policies seems more suitable for farmers having big land holdings. Based on an initial overview, we will now try to focus on our second agenda, of identifying the actual problems in the existing supply chain.
efforts have been made largely to identify the underlying issues in the information network of existing model. It can be clearly inferred that the agriculture department lacks proper communication channel with lower hierarchy nodes being farmers. Moreover, farmers have very limited access to information within whole of their community and are usually dependent on the nearby land holdings. The lack of interlinking between different nodes gives rise to many concerns. As obvious, due to highly unregulated mandis, there have been problems of huge price gaps between mandi and market. Further, there has been lack of proper storage and logistics facilities for farmers produce. Last but not the least, farmers were also rarely aware about the policies framed in their favor by the government. Finally, based on the identified problems, efforts have been made to present a viable solution, and is being put forth as our last agenda of presentation. The basic idea behind proposed framework, is to interlink different nodes to minimize the information gap between them. Based on the discussions with different stakeholders for a feasible solution, a WhatsApp model is proposed to channelize the flow of information. To summarize, the proposed model is supposed to connect Agriculture Department, Export Department, Sarpanch, influential village people and farmers in order to facilitate the two-way flow of information. This slide presents information on systematic hierarchy of the proposed WhatsApp model, based on the existing linkages between different nodes. To begin with, the first hierarchy will include the agriculture and export department. In the second stage, village sarpanch and influential villagers can be brought together. Further, big farmers for example owning more than 3 acres of land, can be connected by sarpanch and influential people. These big farmers can themselves help to connect with small farmers which constitute almost 70% of population ensuring end-to-end -end connectivity. With the proposed model, it is expected that the information flow will help to address various issues related to policies, exports, financial issues, logistics network etc. Awareness on different government policies, will help the farmers to plan and strategize their cropping pattern, along with exploring other business opportunities. Farmers can also get detailed information on the quality of soil and suitable fertilizers, through awareness camps organized by agriculture department. An information on high demand export items, will also increase the diversity of crops in Indian agriculture, which normally sticks to traditional crop practices. Farmers will also be able to get correct rate of their produce as per market prices and demands, with suitable access to information about wholesale retailers and big players. Similarly, improved financial services, better bargaining power in mandis and proper access to logistics and storage facilities will definitely help the farmers to improve their agricultural output. The current study has been conducted, with an aim to address the issues pertaining to post-harvest losses, subsequent to challenges in the entire supply chain process. The proposed WhatsApp model for communication architecture, will ensure easy flow of information between various stakeholders, and effective implementation of policies. It will ensure transparent process and fair distribution of resources, leading to better condition of farmers and agricultural produce. The study has been published in Industrial Engineering Journal, and is freely available online for a detailed reading. I thank you all for spending your valuable time, to go through the project information. Kindly subscribe to this channel for further updates on different projects.